Well, our next topic is intensive wheat management. We're out on a wheat field that was actually sprayed eight times with different things, and it's going to be great in terms of yield, but we also have some challenges that we need to talk about a little bit, including we're in the lowest ground that there is in the field right now, and there's a little bit of the wheat that went down, as you can see right next to me. So we got to talk about both of those things. How do we get more yield, number one, and how do we prevent the wheat from going down, number two? All right, I'm first of all, just getting over the shock of eight times going over the field. Yep. That, that seems a little bit excessive, but when you think about crops, it's really important to look at what your net is going to be at the end of the year rather than how much work you're doing along the way or how many inputs you're putting in because it really doesn't matter how much you spend on the crop, it matters how much you make on the crop in the fall. Now, when we're looking at wheat, there are quite a few different things going on. There, there are grasses to control, broadleaves to control, insects, diseases, lots of different things. And you really should note, okay, when you think, man, eight times across the field, that wasn't eight single things going on. There are oftentimes many different things happening at the same time. In one particular application on this field, we did five things at the same time. Five things. That's just crazy. Well, not really five things. When you figure some of the adjuvants in and, and, and that, yes, there were five products that were used. But basically what we did here in this particular field, first of all, in terms of the lodging problem and why that exactly happened, there was probably a little too much nitrogen left from the year before. It was a soybean crop the year before. And there were good soybeans raised in this particular field, probably 55 bushel soybeans. And there was ample nitrogen that was left. We applied phosphorus and potassium last fall. And in that that phosphorus, it did have some nitrogen as well. So between that and the soybean credit, maybe we had a little too much nitrogen to start with, but there was no nitrogen applied until this wheat crop was relatively good sized and we stream barred twice. So there was a total of 120 units stream barred in two separate applications this spring. So we thought we did everything right there. And as you can see, I mean, this wheat isn't, I mean, it isn't gigantic. It's uh, about waist high if and or maybe even a little shy of waist high so it's not that it's that huge it's just we did have some very strong straight line winds come in along with some very heavy rain at just the wrong time so those kinds of things happen and as a percentage it's a small percentage of this field that actually went down well the first thing that we worry about after fertility is we want to get good weed control out in a field early on in the year the first thing that we were doing was getting grass under control now we haven't been uh, a continuous wheat farm we haven't really had an issue with wild oats uh, but we did want to take care of any grasses out there, predominantly foxtails in this field. If you're raising wheat, that's your number one concern. Get the grasses under control. You don't want to let them go because grass is really difficult to kill in a grass crop. Now, in other crops, we talk very often about how you want to use a pre-emerge herbicide and then you want to follow up with a post-emerge herbicide to get the best overall weed control. In wheat, pre-emerge herbicides are rarely used, but we did use a pre on our wheat. We used a very low rate of Everest. We just used two tenths of an ounce. We just used that real low rate to make sure we didn't have any problem damaging any of the wheat or anything like that. That's why the rate was so low, but at least that gave us some degree of grass and broadleaf control early on. Then in addition to that, we made a separate application spraying some Puma a little later to control grass and wild oats. So we literally, I, I can't find any foxtails, I can't find any wild oats in this field. That is so important if you wanna have top yields on your farm. And I think overall we did an excellent job in terms of grass control. When it comes to broadleaves control, there's a lot of products that can be used in wheat for broadleaves. And you really have to look at what your worst weed problems are. And then you have to look at some of the new chemistry as well to say, wait a minute, I've always done this and it's worked okay, but maybe I could step it up by using some of these new products. Well, the new product Product that we used in our farm is Husky and it's a combination of an old product which is Bronate or Wolfpack along with a new product that's kind of similar to Callisto or Laudis. So we really liked the weed control out of that. It was relatively safe to the, the wheat. Now I will say when you tank mix something like Husky or Wolfpack or any of those products along with a grass killer, you'll get a lot more burn than doing something like we did by split applying the grass and the broadleaf herbicide. And what I always tell people is, look, if you have just a few weeds out in the field, it's probably not a big deal if you want to combine your grass and broadleaf killer. But you know what? This spring, we talked about it on a, a recent show, we had very thin leaf cuticles and when you made those combinations this spring, it really seemed to burn the wheat. So you might have actually damaged the wheat by combining your grass and broadleaf killer. It's a main reason or a big reason why we separated those passes this year ourselves. Well, the other thing is just antagonism, especially for the grass killing. 
If you've got some tough grasses in your field, maybe it's yellow foxtail, maybe it's wild oats, maybe it's downy brome. Those types of weeds cannot be controlled when you're tank mixing a broadleaf and a grass herbicide because there is some antagonism. Well, they can't be controlled as well. You'll go from 95% down to 80 or 85%. And you know, and that's if you've a big got deal. it yeah. doesn't seem like it's that big a deal. You think, oh, 80%, that's that's acceptable control. No, it's not. If you've got a lot of weeds out there and you've got a high dollar crop like wheat is this year, you want to have every bushel you can. And that's really the key. You know, if wheat was worth three dollars, would we have made eight trips across this field? Well, maybe. But I'll tell you what, when wheat's worth nine dollars, we're definitely making eight trips across this field because I want every possible bushel I can get. And one thing dad always told us on the farm is you got to look for jobs that are going to pay you a hundred dollars an hour or more. And I just look at every one of these jobs we're doing on the wheat and I look at that individual thing that we're spraying. And every single one of those eight times we were out here, we felt there was a great return on investment. We thought it was a job that paid way more than $100 an hour, so we're doing it. And I realize it seems very excessive, and for you on your farm, you maybe only are out in your wheat field once or twice or three times, but you have to kind of open up your mind a little bit and just think, you know, when things dramatically change in terms of what the wheat is worth, you got to look at your management practices. Maybe they need to change a little bit too. And I'm not saying we're doing everything perfect and I'm not saying every one of these things will always work out great. But all I'm telling you is if on your farm you've got great opportunities for return on investment, take advantage of them. The other thing is we have to prepare to be able to do some of these things. In our field we put in tram lines so we're always driving down those same tracks. We can do every application ourselves with a ground rig. Now if you want to do aerial application that's fine too. That can work just great in your wheat and it can be a way to add some labor to your farm. We chose to do it ourselves with the tram lines. Either way is fine. But when you're looking at wheat and you're going to go over and spray for broadleaves or you're going to spray uh, disease or insects, scout for all those things and take a look at what's going on in the field. Now when it comes to insects, you can certainly take a look at what's out there, whether it's aphids or, or something else. Scout for those bugs before you're making the pass because you just never know when those things are going to pop up and all of a sudden you say, man, I just sprayed and now I've got these bugs out yeah. there. I really don't want to go back. Well, scout before you go out and look for a variety of things, not just weeds and picking, well, okay, I've got these weeds. I need to have this product. Look for bugs, look for diseases as well. And diseases, it's tough to scout for. A lot of times they're, they're if they get started in your field, you really can't control them with fungicide. So you have to do a little bit of anticipation. You have to listen to what's going on in other areas around you. If, if they're starting to see some disease, if we're having the right conditions that favor disease. Like this year, it was cool and it was wet for quite a while. We were getting rain almost every day and wow, you know, what an environment for a disease. We knew it was going to be there. Okay, let's move through these eight things that we did, the eight applications. Like we said, we were across this field pre-emerge with a grass and broadleaf herbicide. We went with a grass herbicide later. We went with a broadleaf herbicide later. We went with two passes of stream barring. We sprayed fungicide on here twice, and then we foliar fed one time. So that's eight trips across the field. We also, in combination with the fungicide and one with the, uh, the broadleaf killer, we added insecticide. So we actually had three three trips of insecticide on this field, three shots of fungicide, and we've got a nice clean wheat field at this point. Well, it sounds pretty extreme to make eight trips across a field, but this year the odds of it paying off are really good with the high prices of our crops. One other thing that will definitely pay for your farm is controlling our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 